This is a continuation of solving by factoring. In letter D, we have 24x cubed equals 36x squared. When we're solving by factoring, we need to set it equal to 0. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract 36x squared from both sides. 36x squared. 24x cubed minus 36x squared is equal to 0. Now from here, I have a binomial. 24x cubed and 36x squared is a binomial. There's two terms. There's only a handful of things that we can do with two terms. The first thing we want to check is, is there a GCF? And the answer is, yes, there is. x4 and 36 are both divisible by 12. And x cubed and x squared are both divisible by x squared. Remember, we take the smallest exponent. And now we're going to write what is left. So when I divide 24x cubed by 12x squared, I end up with 2x. 36x squared divided by 12x squared would be 3. So now I have a few factors equal to 0. So 12 is a factor, x squared is a factor, and 2x minus 3 is a factor. It's up to you how you want to handle the 12. Um, if you set each factor separately equal to 0, you cannot set 12 equal to 0. So 12 would just, you wouldn't have to worry about it, it gets thrown out. You can also just lump it together with the x squared if you want to. So you can either just disregard the 12 altogether, or you can say, I'm going to set this equal to 0. And then what ends up happening is you have to divide both sides by 12, and guess what happens to 12? Bye-bye. It goes away, and we just end up with x squared equals 0. Um, so it's really up to you if there's a, a GCF that's just a number. You can just disregard it when you're finding the zeros. Okay, so now x squared is equal to 0. So what number squared is equal to 0? That would be 0 itself. So one solution is that x is equal to 0. The other solution is when 2x minus 3 is equal to 0. There we would add, now we're going to get x by itself, so I'll add 3 to both sides, divide both sides by 2, and we get 3 over 2. So here we have two solutions, 0 and 3 over 2. Letter E, I do see some fractions. If you're not awesome with your fractions, and even if you are, it's always better to clear them out if you can. We can clear them out because it is an equation. So the way that we clear out fractions, or the way that I do anyway, is I get all terms to have the same denominator. Then I can multiply through by that denominator and everything will cancel. My denominators are 5 and 10, so the uh, least common multiple of 5 and 10 is 10. So to get this to be a 10, I would need to multiply by 2. So whatever I do to the denominator, I do to, to the numerator as well. 2 didn't have a denominator, so it has a denominator of 1 by default. I need it to be a denominator of 10, so I'm going to multiply by 10 over 10. And then this already has the denominator of 10. Now that I have everything with a denominator of 10, I'm just going to take the whole equation and multiply by 10. What that's going to do, it's going to cancel out those denominators and leave me with just the numerators. I need to be careful because I haven't simplified the numerators yet. So this numerator is 2 times 1 times y squared, so it'll be 2y squared. Here it's going to be minus 20. And here will be negative 3y. So the denominators are gone. Now we're just dealing with nice integer coefficients and constants. OK, if I'm going to solve by factoring, I need to set this equal to 0. So I'm going to add 3y to both sides. It gets squished in the middle. So I want this going so that it's y squared first, y second, and the constant third. So this would be 2y squared plus 3y minus 20 equals 0. From here, 2, 2y squared, 3y, and 20 have a GCF of 1, so I don't have to worry about that. Um, because this is a trinomial and the leading coefficient is uh, not equal to 1, um, I do want to use my target product target sum method. I see it's not a perfect square. There's nothing special about it. It's just your average, ordinary trinomial. So in this case, the target product would be a times c, which would be negative 40. And the target sum is which is b, is 3. So we're looking for two numbers that multiply to negative 40 and add up to positive 3. You can check your a and c. Those aren't going to add up to 3, though. 20 and 2, not going to work. Instead, I think we want to consider negative 5 and positive 8, because those will multiply to negative 40, and then negative 5 plus 8 will add up to 3. So remember what we do here. We're going to take our winning combination, and we replace the middle term. So instead of 3y, we're going to have negative 5y plus 8y. So it's going to be 2y squared minus 5y plus 8y, I lost it, minus 20 
is equal to 0. Now that I have four terms on the left-hand side, I can factor by grouping. So we're going to group the first two terms, group the second two terms. I'm going to come right over here. Uh, 2y squared minus 5y, the GCF is y. So it will be y times 2y minus 5. The second grouping, 8y and 20, have a GCF of 4. So that would be plus 4. And then dividing 4 into both terms would leave me with 2y minus 5 equals 0. I see that the two, I now have two terms, and they have a GCF of 2y minus 5. So I'm going to pull that GCF out in front, put the leftovers behind it. So it's getting multiplied to y and to 4. <sighs> One more step. We now have two things that when we multiply them, their product is 0. So that means either this thing is equal to 0, 2y minus 5, or this thing is equal to 0, y plus 4. Solve each one separately. So I'll add 5 to both sides. That would give me 2y equals 5. Divide both sides by 2 here, and I would get y equals 5 over 2. For the second one, subtract 4 from both sides. We get y equals negative 4. So this one has two solutions, negative 4 and 5 over 2. All right, moving on to our last one, letter F, which I kind of invaded its space. Sorry, letter F. For this one, we have x squared, uh, x plus 1 squared equals 3x plus 7. We have a lot of work to do. First, it's not set equal to 0. Second of all, we actually have to expand that. We can't leave it as x plus 1 quantity squared. The good news is that we should know a shortcut so we don't have to actually go through the distributive property. This is a binomial square. So when we expand it, it will end up being first term squared plus multiply the 2 and double it plus the second term squared. Um, equals 3x plus 7. Okay, now I want to set this equal to 0. So I'm going to subtract 3x and 7 from both sides. Line those up nicely with what they're like terms with. And let's simplify this. x squared minus x minus 6 is equal to 0. Because this is a trinomial with a leading coefficient of 1, we can use the shortcut. As soon as we figure out our winning combination from the target product target sum, we can plug it right into the binomials. So the target product is a times c, which would be 1 times negative 6. And the target sum, which is b, would be negative 1. Two numbers that multiply to negative 6 and add up to negative 1 would be negative 3 and positive 2. So we can plug those right in. That would be x minus 3 times x plus 2 is equal to 0. Now we have two things, and when we multiply them, their product is 0. So that means either x minus 3 is equal to 0 or x plus 2 is equal to 0. Here it would be x plus 3. Here we would subtract 2 from both sides, and we would end up with negative 2. So the two solutions would be negative 2 and positive 3.